Do your joints bend further than those of other people? And does your flexibility come with chronic pain and fatigue? You may have hypermobility spectrum disorder, or HSD. In this video, I'll explain what HSD is, how it differs from the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes, and what steps you can take to help manage it effectively. I'm Dr. Claire Francomano, and I'm a medical geneticist who's been taking care of patients with hereditary disorders of connective tissue like HSD and EDS for more than 40 years. The hypermobility spectrum disorders are a group of conditions that are characterized by joint hypermobility and often living with pain and multiple other symptoms, but not meeting the diagnostic criteria for the ehlers syndromes or any of the other hereditary disorders of connective tissue. You can think of hypermobility as a spectrum. People may have only one joint that's unusually flexible or they may be generally hyperflexible or have generalized hypermobility as we call it. They may be completely asymptomatic or they may have multiple symptoms involving multiple different organ systems. The hypermobility the type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome falls at one end of this spectrum. HSD is more common than you'd think, but it's often misunderstood and frequently misdiagnosed. The musculoskeletal symptoms involve the joint hypermobility and then the symptoms that result from that joint hypermobility, which may be subluxations, dislocations, and chronic pain. Often the muscles work overtime to try to stabilize those loose joints, and so we get muscular pain related to the muscle overwork and cramping in trying to stabilize those those loose joints. And in addition to the musculoskeletal complications, there are multiple comorbidities that we see in people living with HSD. They may have orthostatic intolerance, meaning that they get woozy or dizzy when they go from lying down to sitting up or standing. They may have gastrointestinal problems because the connective tissue is prominent in the gastrointestinal tract. And they may live with chronic pain and chronic fatigue. And these symptoms may result in challenges challenges for mobility, challenges in accomplishing daily tasks, and challenges in even getting to work and doing life's daily activities. So it's important to recognize that HSD is not just bendy joints and can involve multiple different organ systems and may have a profound effect on a person's ability to live their life. How do we make this diagnosis? We use something called the Byton scale, which is a measure of joint hypermobility. And this will tell us if a person has generalized joint hypermobility or not. If they have generalized joint hypermobility, then we say they have GHSD for generalized hypermobility spectrum. And it's a disorder if they're symptomatic. Some people with hypermobility are completely asymptomatic in which case we would just say the person has generalized hypermobility. If they have multiple symptoms, we call it generalized hypermobility spectrum disorder. We take a comprehensive history, a family history, and do a comprehensive examination to try to ascertain if the person has one of the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes or any of the other hereditary disorders of connective tissue. In the presence of hyper mobility, but lacking a formal diagnosis of any of the other hereditary disorders of connective tissue, we can make a diagnosis of hypermobility spectrum disorder. Now, how do we think about managing the hypermobility spectrum disorders? Well, for one thing, we know that low impact activity is extremely important for people living with joint hypermobility. It's important to keep the muscles around those joints toned and strengthened so that they will be able to support the joint laxity without causing additional pain. Compression garments may be very helpful for people who are living with orthostatic 
orthostatic intolerance or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, otherwise known as POTS. And these devices can help improve stability as needed. Pain management is very important and finding a multidisciplinary team that can help support all of the symptoms that people living with HSD are experiencing is really crucial. That multidisciplinary team to address all the symptoms and make sure that each one is addressed to the very best of medicine's ability. Living with HSD can really be isolating, but connecting with a community can be really, really helpful and make a huge difference. So connecting with the Ellers Danlos Society and finding others who are living with similar symptoms can really be very, very helpful. If you've liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for updates on HSD and the Ehlers-Danlos Syndromes. Please leave me any questions you may have in the comments below. I'd be very happy to answer your questions in a future video. And I really appreciate your joining me today. I wish you the very best on your journey.